Well, good morning. It's Jonathan again. I would like to make a video for the amateur radio community again. The, I have a new call since the last time I made a video. My call has been NB3I for since uh, the mid 80s. So it'll take a long time for me to get used to a new call. But uh, my call was NB3I and uh, a lot of people had trouble copying B followed by a three. And so da 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 was somehow pretty, went by pretty quickly. So, so we'll try uh, the new call K3CY, Kilo 3 Charlie Yankee. Uh, I'll have to uh, practice that. The uh, video today is going to be on uh, the creation of this spider beam that I'm making for field day uh, using that telescoping mast that uh, I made uh, last year for the car and for uh, portable use. First of all, let's talk about this spider beam. I made this spider beam uh, with uh, used fiberglass that some of the guys had. Uh, one person had a, a couple elements from a, um, a stepper uh, beam and another person had um, uh, 11 foot uh, fiberglass from a previous project which I was able to add to it and uh, it created a great frame uh, just connecting with these dowels. The dowels do have a downside in that if it rains they get wet and the wood swells and then we can't get them apart so that is a bit of a problem but otherwise they work easily. Here you can see the three driven elements uh, fed by a one-to-one -one ballum. I tie the 15 meter element together with a 20 meter element and then use a uh, coax, 50 ohm coax, to go over to the 10 meter uh, driven element on the other side of the, of the center point. I used masonry string to tie the elements off to the cross pieces. Uh, that wasn't a really good idea because they stretch so. And that's uh, if I had it to do over again, I wouldn't have used it. But it it's makes it pretty light. Uh, I think it weighs about 26, uh, 30 pounds. I'm not quite sure. Now over to this mast. You remember last year I made this video on this mast that I tied on the back of the car. It was a good idea for a vertical, but it really, it really wasn't braced well enough at all to do a, a, uh, a beam. But it worked really well as a vertical in the backyard off of this uh, post. So much so that I thought I should make something like that permanent. So I made, made it out of wire. This is the feed point. It feeds one wire for 160 and the other wire for 80. The coil matches the impedance for the antennas to 50 ohms and uh, ground buses for the radials. The post, uh, the wires separate at the top of the post, goes up about 60 feet, and the 160 goes to the left and the 80 goes to the right. So it works great. But now back to the telescoping mass to raise the spider beam. Obviously I needed to build a much more substantial framework to give proper bracing to this carriage that will raise the mast. So I used 3 16th angle iron uh, to uh, create a little bit of a framework here with braces on all four sides and uh, needed to level it, make sure it's level so that the telescoping mast will be plumb, added the carriage and, uh, and then mounted the mast on top of this carriage. It's a square mast. It, uh, the outside uh, square is three inches square with an eight, eighth inch wall. The inside is two and a half inches. And so it weighs probably about 75, maybe 80 pounds, I'm not sure. And it fits into this carriage where we uh, use it to swing the telescoping mast into the air. And then we can use this cable to tie onto the, uh, the mast to pull it up. I added these blocks for weight to uh, keep it upright uh, because that's a lot of torque when way with a something at the end of a 25 foot mast, 28 foot mast uh, at the end. This is uh, the insert that is used to support the 
the swing mast that the sub biter beam will uh, be attached to. So now the time has come to try to mount this spider beam on that, that framework. Needed to stretch up the, the strings that seem to constantly sag. This wasn't an easy job. I really should have had some help because wires kept snagging on things, strings kept snagging on, on things, and I had a lot of trouble, but eventually it got there. Thankfully, the spider beam fiberglass tubing are very flexible and forgiving, and uh, eventually it got on that tube. The plastic PVC mast uh, just slips over top this steel pipe that's at the end of this telescoping mast, and uh, eventually it'll get there. The theory is that that steel pipe that goes into the PVC mast would swing on a bolt, pivot on a bolt, from a horizontal to a vertical position, and then go in a vertical position as it goes up. And I have a string attached to that pipe so that when it, uh, it gets up, we can pull it straight. But I learned that the string doesn't work really well. and. Uh, using a clamp was much better. But the winch pulled it up and after I released the, the elements from snagging on step ladders, so on and so forth, it eventually got there and the mast worked pretty well. I did need to add extra weight. That concrete block was not sufficient. So using an extra 100 pound of steel was uh, sufficient to get it up. And now I, once it's up to this position, I can tie the guys and, uh, and uh, crank it up a little bit further. The good news is that I have a 1.2 SWR at uh, the bottom of 20 meter band. 14.032, I'm at 1 1.2. And at 14.3, I'm at 1.7. So it is a little on the long side, but it's on the CW side. And then on 15 meters, 1.6 at 21.2. So it's in the middle of the band at 21.2, uh, 1.6. I can't get lower than 1.6. But on 10 meters, I am a little high. At 28, I think the lowest I can, 2.0. 1.9 there at 27.5. And that's the lowest, 2.0, the bottom of the band. No, 28.6, 2.1. So I'm a little high on 10 meters. If anybody out there has an idea of what I'm doing wrong, to get 20 meter to to get uh, 10 meters a little better than that, I'd be glad to, for their counsel. So now to take it higher, I unhook the cable from the bottom of the mast and take it back through the little hole and hook it onto the cable that comes down from the top of the mast, and then I can use the same winch to pull it up further. We're not completely finished until we bring the beam back home. So we need to test the winch once more to see if it can lower the winch successfully. Again, we have lots of trouble with strings snagging. It would be so much better if I had a helper, but that just wasn't available to me today, so I did it myself. But after a little bit of a struggle, uh, it all came down successfully and we were able to disassemble everything.
Finally, it did come uh, down it, uh, after all of the wires were freed from getting snagged on this and that and the other thing. I was eventually able to get it down and uh, we can disassemble it and get it ready for field day. So in the meantime, thanks for watching and I trust that uh, this experience um, uh, will be helpful to you and if you have some helpful comments for me and the construction of this, I'd appreciate it. So 73's from K3CY.